Hello, today we are going to discuss Mary Magdalene, her role, and these prophecies that are unfolding about the times that we live in. Uh, but first, let us say the greatest prophecy, the prayer that our Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. This is what is unfolding and will continue to unfold in the purification. One great chapter uh, to read if you'd like to understand uh, what's going on, what I'm going through, is Jeremiah 20. That's a very short chapter, uh, but it's, it's, it's excellent. Uh, so you can read that if you feel like it. Uh, more importantly, what we're dealing with is the truth. And what is the truth, as Pilate said? Well, first of all, the truth is a cross. And especially in these times, in a time of universal deceit, speaking the truth is a revolutionary act, as George Orwell said in 1984. But the first thing is to, the first cross is to seek the truth through research, which will give you understanding, which will give you a much bigger cross. Because then you have to do something with it. And depending on what you do, what your decision, what your free will is, is whether you go to the little H, which is hell, or you take the capital H and go to heaven. The choice is yours. Remember what our Lord said about lukewarm. And, of course, there's also the scripture, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge and feigned ignorance especially from our leaders who are not warning the people about what is going on in the times we live in. You will be judged harshly. You will be judged at a much higher level than the lower people. Well, that doesn't mean that I've had people tell me, well, I just want to go underneath the, ra the radar. There's no radar to go under. You've made a decision to work for the dark side. Your silence which is what the prophecies say, that these times would be worse because of your silence, your inaction, your lukewarmness. And Jesus will spit you out of his mouth. Anyway, uh, this is from a place I went to in Detroit when I was there for a conference and uh, I got spit on. <laughs> I was there just trying to talk to some of these Antifa people and the Black Lives Matter and some of those folks in Detroit. Uh, this was a very poor parish. Uh, St. Gabriel's uh, is the name of it. Uh, you can see Magdalene at the feet of the cross. Uh, this, is, this is right behind the altar. Uh, of course, that's the tabernacle. And uh, what I did there is I gave away my weapons of choice. The Rosary. This is brought out in prophecy that uh, these would be one of the great weapons in the war against evil in these times. Of course, many people, especially non-Catholics, but many, even Catholics, reject the Rosary. And prayer, prayer and fasting, can change the world. And without that, uh, it's pretty much useless. This is a, a picture a painting that was in Marie Julie Janey, someone will talk about in depth in another video, but even a little bit later in this one. Uh, and this uh, painting bled and stuff. And, so, and you can see Magdalene again at the foot of the cross. Now, anyone who's looked into what I'm doing at all, I have a large non-fiction section that it's not, doesn't do, deal with prophecy. I have a whole news section, uh, which you can see the link to up here, if you're interested in going to it. 
this is something that I passed out to all the bishops in America, uh, which are, and these are all just things that have physically happened. We have Conchita receiving communion from the Archangel Michael. We have Father Zudak, uh, who we'll see again with the cross on his forehead. We'll discuss Wilma later. That was a hurricane that came ashore in 2005. Those are the Georgia Guidestones, because the other side wants to be like God. And so that's their new Ten Commandments, where they openly say what their goal is. The very first one, it's written in eight different languages, so it's not hard to decipher. You can look that up on Google Maps, even, and, and go there. On any of the map ones, just type in Georgia Guidestones. And I've personally been there and shot off a roll of film. But the first commandment is to maintain a population on the earth under 500 million. That's 90% of the people got to go. Uh, when you start studying this at all, that's what's going on. A fellow named Cardinal Ratzinger, I have a permanent link on my news website to his uh, a little interview he gave in 2000 saying it is our duty, because uh, he said there's people here specifically talking about the UN who do not think there's enough room for everyone at the table but uh, it's our duty but he said especially as Christians to protest this and today I was at Planned Parenthood a leading eugenics operation uh, and no one was there like, oh except for the other side they came up they had about 40 50 people I was there alone praying the rosary talking to them walking up and down their line uh, they know who I am. <laughs> and, uh, and then Sarah, this, old, uh, this older woman, uh, came. And uh, she stood on the other side of the street with this large, very graphic sign of what an abortion really is, which is the killing of a human being, a child. And, and I know priests who think it's okay. And even bishops and cardinals who think it's okay and even popes who seem to look the other way and glorify abortionists you won't be glorified in the eyes of God but it's your free will to uh, do whatever you want but I'm simply war I'm not judging you I'm warning you you're free to do whatever you want but I'm not going to follow you Anyway, this is what they're putting in the water, fluoride. Um, I've got a whole website devoted to that. Of course, our mother is crying tears of blood in warning. I mean, there's, there's so many warnings everywhere. That, of course, is Bohemian Grove, where they do a mock sacrifice of a child in front of a stone owl every summer uh, at the end of July. So they just did it a little over a month ago. And, of course, this is the real sacrifice of a child. This is a legal abortion. There's a little girl. What was her choice? You can wait and give the child up for adoption. There's a waiting list. Oh, and this? This is a, a real document. I had this guy come by who tells me he prays all the time, and, but he's <laughs> for uh, abortion. And, I'm, you know, you either do not have a clue who Jesus is and his teachings, or you're delusional about what an abortion is. But, anyway, this is the IMF working paper, uh, Macroeconomics of Decaching the World. This is a big operation. It happens slowly. Everybody can see it. This isn't in hiding. This is all... You can find this document. It's real. It's happening. I've been showing this for more than a decade. Talking about it, showing it coming. This was a show up here from a decade ago. Uh, talking about shipping people in 2017. Remember it was 2014 that the EU tried to chip every newborn. Now the chip with a stamp up by their elbow. There was such a reaction that they shelved the project, but it didn't go away. They just keep pushing, people push back, then they uh, re-educate the people. They've, that's why they've taken over our education system. 
social engineering do you ever hear about this stuff are people warning you about this if they're not and they think they're our leaders i'm talking not just politicians but spiritual leaders woe unto you who are fulfilling the prophecies about your silence and uh you're really working for them Okay, so anyway, this is a Basilica in the south of France, in St. Maximum, uh, to Mary Magdalene. Uh, they also call her Madeline. Uh, they, they change the words sometimes. Uh, this is just something they do in France, but this is actually uh, her Basilica. This is inside it, down in a crypt underneath, uh, one floor down. Uh, there she is. And then also down there is this uh, replica with a, with a skull in there. And there's a little piece of flesh on there where uh, Jesus touched uh, her when he said, uh, Do not touch me, for I have not yet ascended to my Father. And then we have that painting over there is in the church. Uh, once again, she's uh, at our Lord's feet as she was uh, during his lifetime. And of course we have St. John Divine and our mother also there. And the Blood Royal. This is another painting here uh, at that same church. Uh, it's pretty dark so you may not see. There's a serpent down here. And she's holding a uh, like a vase or a container, uh, which is the symbol for containing sang royal, blood, the blood royal. And then that's also what this is. This is in St. Mary's de la Mer, which we'll look at short, shortly when I, I show you the map and where all these places are. This is where they came ashore uh, when they came to France, her and Lazarus and Mary, Mag and Mary Magdalene, their brothers and sisters. And uh, this is there's symbolism in the, in, uh, the V. You see it's up high over her womb. And then again, she's carrying uh, this vase, uh, with, which symbolizes the, the blood royal. Now this is Mount Baum, where uh, she went in hermitage for the last years of her life. After she came to France, then she went over here up in the, the clouds there in the mist and we'll uh, take a closer look now this is a monastery uh, that has been built there uh, it's now run by the Dominicans then as you get up closer they have this crucifixion scene and of course once again we have Magdalene at the feet of our Lord and the two thieves and uh, our mother and uh, St. John Divine this is looking out over the valley and that's a piata, a, a copy of the famous piata that Michelangelo did, which is in Rome. If, if you're ever in Rome, it is worth seeing. It is unbelievably beautiful, uh, the piata in uh, the St. Peter's. Here's a, a close-up of it. It's not as uh, good as the actual piata, and the actual piata does not have Magdalene uh, at her feet but like I said this is just a representation of it at uh, the entrance to her cave and here's a placard in front of it uh, so it's been uh, formally uh, taken care of uh, for the last 1600 years there And then this is the cave. They've built a, a little formal entrance there to the cave. And then, of course, uh, this, there's the top of that archway. And it is a, a sheer cliff going up. It's a, it's a short walk up there, probably a, a mile, less than two miles to get up there. And it's a, it's a nice road because you can drive. They can drive up there pretty much. But they don't allow you uh, to drive up there. You have to walk up. And there's not many people who go there, so it's a very nice and quiet. Even in the summer when I went, I went uh, probably the middle of June uh, a year ago. 
Uh, this is inside the cave now. There's a, a statue of her. Uh, there's an altar. There's actually a little place. Uh, if you happen to be going with a priest or something, you can say mass there. There's a very small, there's probably about 10 pews or so. So it's a very small, uh, intimate area. But it's very nice, very beautiful. I would love to um, have a mass said there. Here's another uh, part of it. Um, another statue in the cave. And here's another little place to pray where there's a little recluse. And uh, we have, I believe that's a femur, part of her femur bone there. Uh, and then there's a little kneeler you can uh, pray in front of it. Ask her for help. Here's a couple of statues uh, or reliefs, however you want to look at it. One, of course, is uh, when she's at our Lord's feet and Martha is asking our Lord to tell her to come and to help me. And our Lord says, Martha, Martha, calm down. And then uh, this, of course, is uh, Magdalene uh, begging our Lord to uh, help Lazarus. Which of course he does. He raises her, raises him uh, from the grave. Now the Da Vinci Code, of course, went into this bloodline. Um, as far as that all goes, uh, let's just go over. This all happened way before the Da Vinci Code. The start of it and everything goes back from my childhood and everything. Uh, we're going to actually look at scripture where the Da Vinci Code took obscure uh, books. We're going to actually look at the Bible and uh, some other books, but primarily the Bible. And then, of course, there was a story about a church. We're going to look at that. We're going to look at prophecies. And then uh, my own uh, thing that was back in uh, 95, a spirit coming as our Lord in a locution, not in a dream, uh, said to me uh, that my greatest hardship was that I could not have children as a man. Now, does that mean that I'm from the bloodline? Was, was it, do, I, do I think that Jesus was married to Magdalene before the crucifixion? No. Is it a fact that Jesus has many wives? Yes. That's, that's what nuns are now. So who was the first wife? And we'll develop that a little more of, a, of another wife that he showed. And so someone was the first wife. So if uh, there was a, a physical uh, breakdown, then I believe that Somewhere between the resurrection and the ascension, uh, he gave Mary Magdalene uh, some of his sperm. Not through physical contact. I do not believe, because he is divine, that he had a physical contact as uh, we do. I believe that if, and I'm not saying he did, if there was, that's how that happened. Now, it could also just be through, as Catholics, and, and uh, the, the few other Orthodox uh, religions that believe in the real presence, um, which is another story that I'll get, we can get into, but it's clearly from the Bible about the real presence of our Lord, from the sixth chapter of John, uh, also, uh, Second Corinthians, Paul, uh, the other Gospels mention it, and it's littered throughout the whole Old Testament. I mean, I don't have time to get into it all here, but that would be one way, because we're literally becoming one with our Lord when we, as he said, you must eat my flesh and drink my blood, or you will have no life in you. From the sixth chapter of John. You can read that for yourself. Uh, so there's so there's that. So I, I'm not sure. I'm not 
there's no way to prove it and nothing is changing you know people wanted to kill dan brown for simply writing that fiction but they never thought what and it's the simplest thing in the book of revelation alpha and omega we'll look at that in just a second but uh, all that i'm pointing out is scripture and the, and the reality. You're free to go whichever way you want. There are people coming after me, the two witnesses, who <laughs> you can read. That's in the 11th chapter. Feel free to read it. But let's get into some scripture and stuff. Enough talking about this. Let's start in the beginning. And God said, let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. For signs. And those are only just some of the signs. Remember, uh, our Lord in the Gospel talks about, uh, in Matthew, and there's other places, about the roaring of the waves. And uh, in the book of Revelation, it, it talks about the four angels being sent to the four corners of the earth. And uh, so there's, there's plenty of mention of other things along with the natural bodies in the heavens. And then uh, also in Genesis, in 3.15, it says, And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed, and it shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt strike his heel. Now, the first, that is in the King James Version, in the St. Joseph Version, which is the Catholic Bible. The word is offspring, and instead of bruise, it's strike. So, however you guys want to play with words, remember Paul and what he said about people who play with words. I'm not trying to play with words, I'm just... This is the King James Version and the St. Joseph Version, so you can look it up and see. Uh, and an interesting thing is uh, when I was younger, in my teens, my late teens, I had a big fall and I broke my heel, the calcanus, which is your heel, and it's actually cocked. And I got, I remembered this verse in Scripture. And uh, so anyway, just a little thing. And here's something that happened, uh, and it was a part of that, the signs of the times, remember, that I sent out to every bishop in the country, that, that signs of the times, along with a letter. Wilma means protector. And you may not have noticed this, but a two, a perfect two, formed in the eye of the hurricane. This is an actual Doppler radar image. You can look it up. Research it for yourself. Don't take my word for it. But this is what's coming. This is unfolding. This is all going to continue to unfold and only grow. As the prophecy says, little by little. Because God is going to have to force the issue. I mean, it's already being suppressed. And if you were looking in the Old Testament again, what would be another great place you would expect to maybe find something about this? Isaiah. Probably the greatest book. If you've never read Isaiah, clearly, please read it from end to end. It's not that long. Um, anyway, here's the first one, uh, 5310. It says, Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He hath put him to grief. When thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin, he shall see his seed. He shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. And uh, there's, we'll, we'll connect this later also into the book of Revelation, more in another uh, video when I discuss that more and more. Uh, though I will tell you to read the 13th chapter, it's right in there. And it just happens to be on my birthday in there. But uh, then in 5310, in um, this is in the St. Joseph Bible. But the Lord was pleased to crush him in infirmity 
if he gives his life as an offering for sin, he shall see his descendants in a long life, and the will of the Lord shall be accomplished through him. His descendants. I mean, the one who's crushed is Christ for our sins. He's the Savior. There is, I mean, he is the Savior, period. There's no new saviors coming. Now this is in Sacred Core. Remember the story of the church from that Da Vinci Code? Well, this is a real church that really exists. And it's got seven domes. It's part of, the seven is a big part of this uh, book and, and strategy. And then uh, it's on Mount Mart, which is Mount of the Martyrs. You'll see that coming into play both in Scripture and uh, in prophecy. Now we're going to enlarge this section up here. This is obviously the altar where they do perpetual adoration. And people literally walk by our Lord God, their Creator, and don't even know what's going on. I mean, this is how you know, disconnected most of the world is to what is going on. But every knee shall bow to our Lord. What is coming is a Eucharistic reign of our Lord after the purification. It will be, the Mass will be outlawed. That's also what's coming. That's what's coming first before the Eucharistic reign. Um, well, unless we all repent like Nineveh. But I wouldn't hold your breath on that. I wouldn't put any money on it. I'd pray for it and strive for it. But human nature is what it is. Just like in the days of Noah, just like in the days of Moses and the golden calf. You know. But I'm still going to try. I've put my life on the line for this. Uh, given up everything uh, of the world, which is basically nothing. Because the world is here today, gone tomorrow. Where do you want to be in 500 years? That's what you have to ask yourself. And work towards that. Work towards the kingdom. Work towards something that's profitable. Everybody's worried about their um, retirement. I'm worried about, I, I'm not worried, I'm dealing with eternity. Everyone wants a great relationship. Well, who's the greatest person to have a relationship with? Then, then your creator. And he wants you. He will not reject you. You have to reject him. That's how it works. So anyway, let's, let's take a closer look at this. So, here it is, the French saints, and the first three are in a boat. As I mentioned before, it's Lazarus, Magdalene, and Martha. And you can see, once again, we have Magdalene with the vase over her womb and the serpent at her feet coming up to get it, which is right out of the 12th chapter, the end of the 12th chapter in the book of Revelation. You'll see that shortly. It's right there. It's not, it's not hidden because in their halos, you may not be able to read it here, but if you go there, or if you enlarge this picture enough, or go to my website, you can download the picture and enlarge it. Their name is in their halo. So there's no doubt about who's who. It's not hidden. So this is the 12th chapter of the book of Revelation. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun, the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of twelve stars. And this is actually a constellation, which we will look at shortly, which is going to appear shortly in, on the 23rd of September. And it hasn't appeared in almost 6,000 years. Uh, and then at the end, like I told you, and it's interesting, the 17th, in the 17th chapter of the book of Revelation, is another, which we're not going to look at, today, but we'll look at it another time, it deals with this. You can, you can read that if you're interested in the beginning. And then, and the dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. Now that's the King James Version. The um, St. Joseph Version says offspring. 
It's, a, it's the same thing. Offspring, seed, whatever. You guys fight about it if you feel like it. Whatever. This is just what it is. And what's being fulfilled. And uh, here we have, remember I mentioned about the 17th chapter. It says, there will be seven kings, five have fallen, one is, and one is yet to come. So that means one came, but we didn't know. So the seventh will, because remember I told you about the seventh uh, being a part of all of this. That's part of the story. And there's prophecies about that, both in the Bible and in this book. Because remember the code, the code. Yes, well, Nostradamus, what does his name mean? Nostra means our and Dam means lady, our lady. And uh, here's the painting, Michel de Nostradam. These are the only two paintings of him that exist. Uh, it's Michael of, or could even you could even say from our lady, right there. And what did he do? He wrote a book that's laid out in ten centuries, and we'll get into more into the book a, a little later. But, uh, like I said, this is something that's been going on for a while. So it's, it's not like you can pick this up and start now and say, oh, yeah, I am. No, no, no. You had to fulfill the prophecy, as I did, in July of 1999. And here's my passport. <laughs> it was interesting. I was looking at it here just before, and it's actually stamped on the seventh page of uh, the passport. Just... I mean, I, I didn't do that. They, they just uh, happened to do that. But it says, uh, from the sky shall come the great king. And this is the actual word, defrayer. Now, as we built up to the millennium, people were using this quatrain. And they were saying this word was terror. Now, you can look it up and see it says defrayer. And uh, you can figure out what that means. And what's going on, what's happening. Uh, then it talks about uh, these are the Antichrist uh, coming back and the um, war reigning before and after. We've, we've got war, been reigning constant war for the last, since 2000. Since the, the false flag attack in 2001. It's been constant war. And it's just going to keep going for a while. This is the purification. You'll see what's going to happen with war in a little bit. And remember what happens, uh, if you want to look at these prophecies, look at uh, 72, 73, but especially 74, talks about after the, the seventh number, the games of slaughter, which will come. The worst is still a ways off. We're going to go through a period that's going to be horrific, and will seem horrific, but it's not going to be as horrific as what's coming in the very near future. And uh, now I want to show you where this all took place. So here's St. Mary's de la Mer. This is just east of Marseille over there. Uh, obviously there's Marseille. I mean that's like maybe 50 miles or something. So it's, it's very close. And they do a celebration every summer of them coming over from Palestine and of um, the, this little girl that was with them, Sarah, uh, the unknown queen. And then this is Mount Bam. This was uh, where the cave is. Uh, right over here is uh, St. Maximum, where the basilica is. And uh, so if you ever want to go there, you can see all this stuff. And then... This up here is uh, St. Remy. This is where Nostradamus was born. And this is Ceylon de Province, where Nostradamus lived. His house still exists. It's a museum. Uh, there's some interesting stories with those people I've dealt with. Um, but uh, So anyway, this is how it looks on the map geographically, where, where it all comes together there in the, the south of France. Uh, this is some more now... As I said before, the key to understanding the book of Revelation is Alpha and Omega, first and last. 
and um, just read it like that. That's it builds up to this thirteenth chapter, and we'll we'll discuss that just a little more in a second. But also in 1999, uh, Father Zudak got this uh, cross on his forehead, and uh, he's been checked out by the Vatican. He now has the full stigmata and still has that cross uh, because we are marked first. Uh, you can read that in the sixth chapter of the book of Revelation. The four angels have been sent to the four corners of the earth. And then God said, now wait, we have to mark our people before we, uh, for you're allowed to hurt the earth. Uh, you and I aren't going to get a mark on our forehead because we have to believe in God. That's from our intellect. The other side, in the 13th chapter at the end, the 666, you can read that. And it says, um, they will take it in their forehead or their hand. Now, the reason is, is because, as I said, our intellect is you know, our brain. That's, and so we have to believe in God. The other side, some will believe in the beast system and love it. And you can see that building, and we'll talk more about that. Uh, on another time when I'm more into the revelation. But for now, some will not believe in the system, but they won't have enough faith in God. And so they'll take the mark just so they can buy and sell. Uh, because they're not, they love their flesh more than they love God and have faith in Him. So uh, we have to pray for them. I would start strengthening yourself now Get ready for this. Because uh, it's only going to get worse and it's only going to get harder as the trials mount. There'll be an uptick. Um, God, I don't want to get into all of that right now. But um, anyway, then we have Marie Julie Janey, who's another major factor in this uh, whole story. I have links to uh, this little booklet. Uh, if you're interested, it's free. You can, if you go to other people's writings on my website there, the religious website, uh, you'll, you'll see the link for other people's writings. Just go in there. There's a long book on uh, the monarch. And in there is a ton of prophecies going back millennia. That's one book. That's several hundred pages long, but there's just one section in that book. If you open it up, it's like a PDF file. And then, then there's this little pamphlet, which is just short and concise about uh, her. She talks about the new mass, uh, the disobedient bishops and priests and pastors, uh, the, the mass being outlawed, uh, tons of stuff, tons of stuff about the monarch, tons of stuff about what's coming as far as the trials and tribulations. Uh, there's also in here a, um, the, um, the remedy for uh, this uh, killer plague that's coming. There's going to be a plague upon the earth that we won't be able, uh, there'll be no cure for it. But our Lord has given us a cure, just like he did in the Old Testament. This is no different than he's done before. He warns his people, and all it is is on a little piece of paper, uh, you just write, Oh, Jesus, conqueror of death, save us. O crux ave. Uh, and you can read that in this little pamphlet, just like she also warns about the three days of darkness, which is in also cryptically in the Bible. She talks more about it, that the only lights in the world will be the blessed candles. And you can find out more about that. We'll discuss that more later. And not all candles will work, because people will take this stuff, but they really won't have any faith in God. And so they won't work. But for those of us with faith, who believe in, who are true believers, our candles will work. I don't think I'm going to make it to that point. But... Um, I'll be around longer, longer than most people want. Too long for some, not long enough for others. Uh, but anyway, and she also uh, interestingly said uh, during one of her ecstasies, she came out and said, 
uh, he, the monarch, is our Lord's son. And then uh, the people around her, not, not understanding how this might all fit, just said, well, he must be an orphan then. Well, that, that's not the case. But, well, it is sort of like, like I'm an orphan because no one wants to be around me. This is too much. I guarantee you this isn't any fun. And, and remember what our Lord said. Like I say again, one last thing. The key to the book of Revelation is Alpha and Omega, just as our Lord said. Read it that way and you can see it. If you've never read the book of Revelation, you should read it slowly, ask for help, and then just look at it. We're first and we're last. In the middle is their time. Now here's that great... Um, thing that I was talking about. This is Virgo, and this is the conception on the 20th of uh, November 16th, and then this is the birth, uh, which was today, on uh, the 9th of September. So, where, where Jupiter now leaves this position in the womb area of our mother. Just, a, just an interesting... As, as it said in the beginning, I put all this stuff, because he's in control of everything. He sees it all and makes it all work for his master plan. How much higher are my thoughts than your thoughts? How much greater are my ways than our ways? You know, he's the creator. He loves us. What, did, what does he want? Just a little bit of obedience and our love. It's not complicated. And here's that great sign fulfilled on the 23rd of, Jerusalem, or of uh, September. So in a you know, couple weeks. Viewed from Jerusalem once in uh, 5,932 years. The last time was August 5th, 3915 B.C. Oh, and we are going back to B.C. A.D. None of this B.C.E. garbage that they've got. But go ahead and use that crap if you want for a while. But anyway, you can look this up. These are star charts uh, that people, because they have maps now and programs and can run it and make this all work out. But Signs of the times. Those with ears ought to hear. Those with eyes ought to see. And they ought to use their mouths and speak out. Because remember, silence is the devil's work. And I began this on the first day, if you saw my first video, uh, this is the year of the ruling sword, the year of the sword, 2017, year 5,777, the triple seven in uh, the Jewish Bible. And then, for the word of God is alive and active, sharper than any double-edged sword. It penetrates even to dividing soul and spirit, joints and marrow. It judges the thoughts and attitudes of the heart. Hebrews 4.12, uh, and there we have it again. You know, For the word of God is alive and powerful. It is sharper than the sharpest two-edged sword. And then Matthew, here we are again, our Lord talking. Do not think that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I have not come to bring peace, but a sword. He's come to bring a sword. And in Revelations, and out of his mouth went the sharp two-edged sword. And what is the sword? The word of God. And this is something that when this period of time is done, and it's already been foretold, uh, this is just one of the prophecies in the Old Testament about this. Just one. There's, there's many that haven't been fulfilled. I was explaining it today. Some guys at the picnic were saying, oh man, the Lord's coming any time. I said, who are you kidding? I said, have you read scripture? Just look at scripture, there's no way. There's a whole bunch of stuff that's got to happen. 
because he said everything will be fulfilled this is never been fulfilled and it will be fulfilled and it's already been ordered the law has been given there shall be no armies no navies no air forces upon this planet that will be violently opposed violently tough it will happen sooner rather than later and i'm not talking about months or even years but when the dust settles and how bad this is and those of you who fight against this you will find your place in hell they shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks one nation shall not raise a sword against another now that's one interesting thing i do not support a one world order i do not support one super nation but what i support is we shall not teach our children war anymore that is what's going to happen we're going to grow up we're going to get rid of these toys and if you have to fight go knock yourself out in a ring or something or on some athletic field enough enough of the bloodshed enough it's going to end from abortion to these wars to the eugenics it's going to end to the child sacrifice by the elite you luciferians it's going to end you pedophiles your days are numbered it's going to end some important dates which almost no one talks about hundred years ago a little girl an illiterate shepherd girl pointed and said the mother of God is coming to us on the 13th of every month remember I said the 13th chapter in the book of Revelation is the one of the two great antichrists there are antichrists all around us like Obama he's a, a little antichrist he's not as big as he'd like to be or Hillary I'm not judging them I'm warning them and I pray I prayed for Obama every day and I pray for Obama and Hillary now because they're part of the fallen I mean it's not a close call you cannot support abortion and be on the right side I'm sorry that's just the way it is but, but you're free to to have your opinions and you, and you can uh, <laughs> It's your life. I've warned you. That's all I have to do. And uh, some interesting things about October 13th, which was the great miracle of the sun. As foretold in scripture, there would be signs in the sun. Also in Genesis and in Matthew, remember, there will be signs in the sun. Foretelling the great day of the Lord. October 13th, 1884 is the great vision that Pope Leo the 13th there's that 13 again had and then on October 13th 1917 was a great miracle of the Sun which was foretold and witnessed by more than 50,000 people in rural Portugal and it's interesting it's in a town it was in a it's called the Cova da Ira which means Cove of Peace in a very small village called Fatima, which is uh, one of Muhammad's daughters. <laughs> uh, yeah, our, our mother's come. She knows what's going on. And remember uh, that great sign? Well, there's a moon under her feet. And what is it? The crescent moon. And if you look at the picture of Our Lady of Guadalupe from 500 years ago, there's a crescent moon under her feet. Nothing happens by accident. The queen of peace. The queen of heaven and earth. Our mother. 
you check into the prophecies of Our Lady of All Nations. Uh, a, that's a church approved apparition. Check it out. And then, of course, we have Akita. Again, on October 13th, 1973. Another church approved apparition by uh, Cardinal Ratzinger when he was head of the CDF, Congregation for the Doctrine of the Faith, where it laid out in very stark terms what was coming. From a split in the church, fighting between cardinal, well, fight against cardinal, bishop against bishop, priest against priest, and that the living will envy the dead. Now, if we change and come together and obey God, maybe we'll get a break like Nineveh. But if we don't, that's what's going to happen. That's what's coming. Anyone who tell, And that's why I just show it happening. Because we're so far along. We're, we're so far down. 60 million children aborted. It's silence. Silence is deafening. It is deafening from the pulpit. And the lunacy of our politicians. The lunacy. The great delusion as spoken of. If you want to know more about this, Read Zechariah 13, a very short chapter. That's what's going to be fulfilled. Revelation 13. And my birthday is July 7th. Now you say, well, I thought you said it was your birthday was a part of this thing. You have to look at it. Now there's another prophecy about seeing things in reverse. In Europe, my birthday would be written 13-7. If you want, check out that verse. And remember the, verse I, the prophecy I told you before? Defrayer. Remember the word defrayer. You can look it up. If, if you look it up, see what it means. Look at the, the, the seventh verse in the 13th chapter of all of the main Bibles. It's all the same. Check it out for yourself and you'll understand. What's coming? Sleeper, awake. Rise from the dead. And Christ will shine on you. Be careful then how you live. Not as unwise people, but as wise. Make the most of the time because the days are evil. Ephesians 5, 14 through 16. There's also a prophecy of Nostradamus about the sleeper awaking. Now, I'm being censored. I've shown that on my, uh, my, um, my news show. How if you do a search for me in Google, I don't even come up on the first page anymore. And, but if you do a search, even in, on China's biggest search engine, but on all the other search engines, uh, I suspect they'll eventually change. I am the first one. Because the competition is not that, that stiff. But uh, anyway, so what would really help is if you would pass this video on. The censorship has begun. It slowed down because Hillary didn't get in. But, but pass this on. That's some, if you don't stand for something, you stand for nothing at all. If, if you've even watched this far. So anyway, remember what my Sioux brothers say. Mataka way are we seen. We are all related, and may God bless you and your family and keep you, and may you become a light unto this world. May you get yourself educated, get yourself strengthened, put on the armor of God, and wake someone up. Until next time, may God bless you. Goodbye.